Hey, welcome to Nourishable, I'm Dr. Lara. Today I'll be sharing my investigation into the health claims surrounding the ketogenic diet and brain health. But first, some personal context. This is a picture of a four-year-old me with my great-grandpa, who I lovingly called Opa. My Opa was a clocksmith. I have lovely memories of running around my Opa's small apartment counting all of the clocks. There were over 30. However, my Opa may not have had very many memories of me because he suffered from Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's has touched my family as it has touched many others. As a nutrition scientist, I'm always investigating lifestyle measures that can reduce the risk of disease. So I was particularly intrigued when I saw health claims stating that a ketogenic diet can treat and cure Alzheimer's disease. It's impossible to open up a social media feed these days without seeing the accolades of going keto. With food porn worthy meals built on bacon, avocado and coconut, and fat bomb coffees to get you revved up in the morning. Keto brain health claims include boosting mental clarity, reducing brain fog, and even curing Alzheimer's disease. But what is the science behind these claims? Is there evidence that should push us all to go keto for brain health? Let's science it. <sighs> to understand why our brain can run on ketones, we need to take a few steps back through evolution. As prehistoric hunter-gatherers, our access to daily food was unpredictable. When we eat food, this food is broken down into glucose, and the glucose can circulate through our body to be used as fuel. Due to fluctuations in feast and famine, we had to evolve alternative pathways of metabolism to provide fuel in the absence of eating. During prolonged periods of fasting, this induces ketosis, when our body will produce ketones as an alternative fuel to glucose. Our liver breaks down fat from our adipose stores and converts it into ketones. These ketones can then circulate around our body to be used as fuel. The brain is a particularly greedy organ when it comes to fuel. Although the brain only contributes 2% of our body weight, it uses 20% of our total energy requirement. Plus, the brain can't store energy, so it relies on a constant supply of fuel. The brain will use whichever fuel is available, glucose or ketones. The brain's ability to switch from glucose to ketones for energy was critical in evolution. Otherwise, the brain would starve if we had an unsuccessful day hunting and gathering, or in modern days, if we slept in on the weekend. Although we didn't always understand the biochemistry of this metabolic switch, starvation has a long and interesting history being used to treat neurological disorders. In ancient Greek times, seizure patients were thought to be possessed by demons and ostracized from society. Forced to fend for themselves in the wilds, they inevitably starved. Hippocrates noticed that starvation reduced their seizures, which we now understand today as being epilepsy. The book of Matthew in the Bible also makes reference to prayer and fasting to reduce seizures, depicted here in Raphael's painting, The Transfiguration. Using ketosis to treat medical conditions is called ketotherapeutics. As we entered the 20th century, physicians were curious if we could induce ketosis without the starvation part. Working at the Mayo Clinic, Dr. Russell Wilder experimented feeding epileptic children a very high-fat, low-carb diet, and he found that this induced ketosis and reduced their seizures. And thus, the high-fat ketogenic diet was born. During the subsequent decades, new epilepsy drugs replaced the ketogenic diet as treatment. However, there was still a subset of patients, children in particular, who didn't respond to these drugs. In the 1990s, the ketogenic diet regained a foothold as treatment for drug-resistant epilepsy. It's still used today. Let's go into a little bit more detail about what a ketogenic diet is and how it differs from other dietary patterns. The Dietary Guidelines for Americans recommends a range of macronutrient intake, around 50% of energy from carbs, 25% from protein, and 25% from fat. The classic ketogenic diet designed by Dr. Wilder has 90% of energy from fat, with only 4% from carbs and 6% from protein. This generally works out to 15 grams of carbs per day, or around 17 grapes. This extreme restriction of carbs and protein drastically reduces the availability of glucose, forcing the liver to break down fats and convert them to ketones for fuel. Over the years, modified versions of the ketogenic diet have been used in treatment with an MCT oil supplement. These diets allow a larger proportion of energy from proteins and carbs, with 70% of the energy coming from fat. And what is MCT oil? MCT stands for medium chain triglyceride, and it's referring to the chemical structure of the fat. 
Now, most of the fat in our diet is the form of long chain triglycerides with these long carbon tails that are anywhere from 13 to 21 carbons long. The fat in the MCT oil is much shorter, with carbon tails anywhere from 6 to 10 carbons long. These shorter fats in the MCT oil can be rapidly absorbed directly into our blood and then quickly broken down into ketones by our liver. So how does ketosis help treat epilepsy? Some types of epilepsy are caused by mutations that impair the ability of glucose from entering the brain. By providing ketones as an alternative fuel, this may rescue the brain from insufficient energy. Epilepsy is just one disease. However, some of the characteristics of epilepsy are common across other neurological disorders. So this begs the question, can ketosis be harnessed to treat other neurological conditions? Keto therapeutics are currently being explored for Alzheimer's disease. Similar to some types of epilepsy, the Alzheimer's brain has an impaired ability to take in glucose, which may starve the brain of energy. This study performed PET scans to compare glucose uptake in healthy older adults, those with mild cognitive impairment, and those with mild Alzheimer's disease. The more red and yellow you see, the higher the glucose uptake, whereas the more green and blue, the lower the glucose uptake. And what's quite striking here is that the Alzheimer's brain has a lower ability to take in glucose. The researchers also compared ketone uptake into the brain, and all groups had a relatively equivalent ability to take in ketones. This data supports that the Alzheimer's brain can successfully uptake ketones, and perhaps ketones could be used as an alternative fuel to rescue the brain from energy starvation. Aged dogs develop similar cognitive deficits to humans, making them a good model for human Alzheimer's disease. In this study, 24 old beagles were randomized to either MCT oil or placebo for eight months. They tested their learning and attention at baseline and at the end of the study. The MCT oil treated dogs were significantly better at learning, which they measured by counting the number of errors the dogs made while using a landmark to identify a treat. So fewer errors means better learning. The MCT supplemented dogs also demonstrated better attention, which they measured by the number of errors the dogs made while identifying a familiar object while being distracted by other objects. And what can we take away from this study? Albeit small, this supports that an MCT oil supplement can improve learning and attention in aged dogs, a model of human Alzheimer's disease. Similar investigations have been performed in humans. In this study, 152 patients with mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease were randomized to either a specific MCT oil supplement or placebo for three months. And this was a double-blinded study, meaning that neither the study investigators nor the subjects knew who was getting which treatment. And this is a very important characteristic of rigorous study design because it helps reduce bias that may influence results. Initially, the results didn't look very exciting. At the end of the study, there was no difference in cognition scores between MCT oil or placebo. But the researchers decided to look at the data in a different way. And they divided their study population into whether or not they carried any copies of the gene ApoE4. ApoE4 is a very common gene variant that increases your risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. This graph shows subjects that do not carry the ApoE4 gene, and MCT oil significantly improved cognition in this group. And this final graph shows subjects that do carry a copy of the ApoE4 gene, and we see that the lines are directly on top of each other, showing that MCT oil didn't have an effect on this group. So what can we take away from this study? The interpretation requires some nuance, but this supports that MCT oil can improve cognition in patients with Alzheimer's disease, but only those who do not carry the ApoE4 gene variant. So far, these studies have been looking at an MCT oil supplement, but what about the full ketogenic diet? In order for a very high-fat, low-carb diet to induce ketosis, it has to be followed very closely, and that's really difficult to do. It may be especially challenging for Alzheimer's patients and their caregivers to make major dietary changes. So before we get too excited about the potential of a ketogenic diet for treatment, we first need to know whether it's even feasible for Alzheimer's patients to follow this diet. To test this question, researchers recruited 15 subjects with mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease. They had to follow a ketogenic diet for three months, with 70% of energy coming from fat, plus an MCT oil supplement. Since this was a pilot study to address feasibility, there was no control group. The researchers found that cognition scores improved after three months on the diet and reverted back to baseline after they stopped. However, it's really important to not overinterpret these results because there was no control group. 
it's impossible to know whether these results are due to the diet or due to some other factor about being on the study, like increased interaction with physicians or optimism. This study supports that a ketogenic diet may be feasible for patients with mild Alzheimer's disease. It serves as motivation to run larger studies that include a control group to evaluate the impact on cognition and quality of life. Something that's important to highlight here is that there is a major difference between treating an established disease and preventing disease. So far, there's early promising results for keto therapeutics in treating diseases. However, much more research is needed before this can be applied to patient populations. There have been no studies investigating the impact of MCT oil or a ketogenic diet on cognition in healthy people. All those claims about the keto diet enhancing mental clarity and reducing brain fog are derived from these studies on neurological diseases. There are intriguing research questions about whether fueling the brain on ketones can reduce the development of Alzheimer's disease, but this is just speculation at this point. So let's add some nuance to our keto diet and brain health claims. We started by saying the ketogenic diet can boost mental clarity, reduce brain fog, and cure Alzheimer's disease. So here's some nuance. The ketogenic diet may improve cognition in patients with mild Alzheimer's disease who don't carry specific genes, and it may help treat Alzheimer's disease. When considering nutrition and lifestyle measures to reduce the risk of disease, we need to focus on habits that are sustainable for the long haul, because with brain health, we're in it for the long haul. Keto therapeutics hold promise as a potential treatment for some neurological diseases, but much more rigorous research is needed. There have been no studies indicating that a ketogenic diet or MCT oil impacts cognition in healthy people. Although our social media feeds may be overflowing with accolades of bulletproof coffee enhancing mental clarity, anecdotes aren't evidence. Based on the best evidence that we have available right now, diets that reduce the risk of cognitive decline look really different from the very high-fat ketogenic diet. Diets with a high intake of diverse fruits and vegetables, omega-3 fats from fish, and low saturated fat in take promote long-term brain health. My takeaway? Skip the keto diet fad and build your nutrition around colorful fruits, veggies, and healthy fats, plus physical activity and social connection to support cognitive health. That's what science tastes like. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable. Check out my references in the video description and subscribe to stay up to date on all things nutrition.